Hello everyone. Uh, excuse the delayed vlog. Uh, I caught a really bad flu and have been home for all week. But uh, I still wanted to get this devlog up on YouTube um, in a reasonable time. So I'll do this from home with my headset microphone. So today we've got some really exciting stuff to talk about. We have the map editor, which we've been working hard on and which Kevin have been using to create the new map. Which you will unfortunately not see in this devlog, but perhaps next week. Um, instead we have a lot of visual upgrades in order to prepare the game for a special little announcement that uh, we will go through right after the flash of the logotype. I'm Simon and I'm the game director at Far North Entertainment. Welcome to devlog number 6. Join us! The special announcement of today is the open release of a pre-pre-alpha build of the game in its current stage. While I've been in bed all week shagging ice cream and watching YouTube, the team has done an amazing work at preparing the game for its first public release. If you want to try out what we have so far, simply join our Discord server, which link can be found in the description. We are of course looking for feedback regarding every aspect of our game. However, at this point we are especially curious about what the game performs on various rigs, especially those that are several years old. So we would greatly appreciate if you would be willing to share your PC specifications with us, as well as an approximation of the average frames per second that you get while running the game. The second thing that we would like some technical feedback on is bandwidth. We have been trying the game in two different setups so far. The client, which is hosting the server, might face problems if the upload speed of the internet connection is too low. And we have tested two setups, uh, 10 megabits up per second, which runs like a charm, no problems at all so far. And then we have tested uh, 1 megabits up per second, uh, in which case you'd have more luck driving a motorcycle through a brick wall. It's uh, a catastrophe, basically. So if you face any problems with latency, or lag, or delays, or anything like that while playing the game, please also share your uh, internet connection specifications to us so we know approximately what we need to do in terms of optimization going forward. So then we come to the map editor, and uh, since the game is going to take place in an open world setting, we deemed it uh, highly important to significantly increase the size of the map. Perhaps even make it a uh, hundred times bigger at some point in the future. A uh, hundred times bigger than it's right now, that is. And in order to make this task easier uh, for our environmental artist Kevin, a map editor has been developed. And uh, this map editor is a standalone application, uh, which is capable of serializing and deserializing map data, including uh, floor textures, walls, objects such as loot, uh, decorations, decor, etc. And uh, this means that the map is saved in a file, which uses a format tailored to the maps of our game. This will allow us to create more than one map if we so desire, but it also means that the players themselves could potentially be able to create their own maps and play these with their friends or share the maps online, perhaps even through the Steam Workshop when uh, a release on Steam is uh, coming up. Moving up to the polishing of the game, dynamic lighting is new in this version. In previous versions we used baked lighting for the environment and most lights, and only used dynamic lighting for specific models in the scene. The reason for this is that dynamic lighting can put a lot of pressure on the GPU when a lot of models are present in the scene. Uh, since last week's devlog, the amount of draw calls, which is one of the measurements that we use to see how demanding the game is in terms of graphics, has been cut in half. And at the same time, everything in the scene is now affected by light sources dynamically. I have no idea how my colleagues solve this equation, but it is the results that matter. And the results uh, excite me to a great degree. So with dynamic lighting comes flashlights which makes it possible for us to have a darker and more gloomy setting overall since the players can light things up at will. And I personally also think it does a lot for the immersion of the game. It feels more like a real world. We have also done some quality of life improvements with the UI. So before when you started the game you would only have three input boxes uh, with where you could put in your player name. Uh, an IP address and a port, and you could choose to either host or join a game. And uh, of course when we release this as a alpha, uh, it's uh, not very user friendly, because uh, first of all, how do I play single player, just solo, without multiplayer support? Um, so we've added a play solo button for that. 
And also we have different buttons for join server and host server. So for example, if you uh, choose to host a server, you don't need to specify IP address and port. You only have to specify your name. And uh, vice versa, when joining a server, you only have to you have to specify everything like before. Uh, we also have uh, a separate tab for all of the controls in the game. So you can, if you want to, you check the controls. Otherwise, you have this uh, clean look to the menu. Of course, we want to make a good first impression on the people who try out the game now when we release this first pre-alpha. And that's why this last week has been mostly about polishing the game, fixing bugs, and uh, implementing quality of life improvements. So that the game is not just an internal test build, in which all of the flaws that it has can be excused uh, by this fact. Uh, and we really hope that it is in a state in which the players can focus on playing the game and not focus so much on just finding obvious flaws. And that's it for this week's devlog. It is a bit of a short one, but perhaps the most important one yet. Don't forget to subscribe to Far North Entertainment's YouTube, go to our Discord and download our game. I repeat. Subscribe to Far North Entertainment's YouTube. Go to Discord and download our game. Thanks for watching. See you next week.